Yeah, so right now they're planning a pilot study up in Titusville, which is near the Indian River Lagoon, a location where these manatees have been hit pretty hard. In the northern Indian River Lagoon, about 90% of seagrass has been lost. So, so this is where they're starting. They're feeding them their favorite greens, uh, cabbage, lettuce, and they're doing it in a controlled manner, kind of like a conveyor belt. So, so hopefully this will deter some of this because right now it's getting a little bit colder and when that water gets below 68 degrees, that's when they come inland and use the, the Indian River Lagoon in our spring systems. Yeah, it's so horrible to think about all their food going away. You know, us as humans, we wouldn't like that. So why is this plan really important and do you think it's going to work as we head into the coming years? I, you know, I... I'm hoping that this plan will be successful and that it will give them some some relief in these winter months because because really with them coming in and, and with the Indian River Lagoon being such such a beloved place for those manatees, they're gonna have a choice whether to stay warm inland or to venture out to to find food. So hopefully this program will will be successful and can go to other areas to help manatees in other places. And you mentioned the cooler water temperatures that occur during the winter time. We could actually see some of the video down in Apollo Beach. That's in Tampa Bay. They once the the water drops below 68 degrees, as you were mentioning, they actually huddle there because they get the warm discharge out of the Tico Big Bend right. power, power plant. Why is it though that the manatees are having such a tough time finding their food? Well, there's there's two things. First of all, the manatees find it so hard to stay warm is because they they don't really have a lot of fat. They can be up to 1,200 pounds, but most of their body is actually intestine. That's why they need to eat 10% of, of their body weight in food. So over time, uh, because of algae blooms, climate change, things, ecosystem changes, uh, we've lost a lot of our seagrass. In the Indian River Lagoon specifically, there was a cold snap that started a domino chain reaction, killing off the seagrass, allowing algae to grow, and every year, it, it disallowed that out, that seagrass to grow back more and more. And now with that nutrients from surface water runoff and, and biogenic material or natural organic matter coming into our water bodies, no longer is that nutrients being uptaken by those seagrasses and benthic organisms. Instead, it's being uptaken by algae, which are taking over. And the algae itself had seen changes towards harmful species. So real so, quick. Sorry, real quick here. What can be done for, you know, people watching just another 15 seconds or so left? What can people do? People can watch how much fertilizer they put on their lawn, really look at low impact development, use cisterns, downspouts, uh, try not to water or fertilize during rainy season, things like that. And, and of course, with boats, be very careful when you're going through the water because those boats are still a threat to our manatees. Environmental engineer Tracy Finara, thanks so much for joining us here on Fox. Thanks, Rock. and great seeing you. Great to see you.